I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Ah, well, I enjoy watching that intro every single time I see it. And uh, I mean, what a journey we've been on here uh, at Kirby Allison. And uh, I couldn't be more delighted uh, than to share the evening with all of you celebrating 150,000 subscribers. Uh, it really does seem just like yesterday uh, that we were all here together uh, for our first black tie live stream, uh, celebrating uh, just 100,000 subscribers, which was an absolutely gigantic uh, milestone. And uh, here we are you know, just shoot. I mean, I don't know what this is. Uh, almost a year later, celebrating 150, and what a journey it's been. I mean, uh, through the coronavirus crisis, locking down daily live streams, you know, to kind of help us uh, maintain our sanity and push our way through it. Uh, and so uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, to, um, to, of course, journey with all of you, and then to be back here in the studio doing some more live streams. And I have to say that um, we do plan to, uh, now that summer is over and hopefully the children are going to go back to school, uh, start resuming these uh, more consistently. So uh, thank you to everyone that is joining. Of course, I can see you all here uh, through my computer. I've got your comments pulled up and then I've got the earpiece in and so they're going to help me. Um, you know, this is an evening for us to just kind of enjoy each other's company and talk about what we love, which of course is quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Uh, that is what we all come together here uh, at Kirby Allison to enjoy and to embellish. And uh, I'm so delighted to be able to share uh, in that journey with all of you. Uh, so first things first, uh, hopefully if you all are at home and have the uh, privilege or the opportunity for a nice drink uh, and a cigar, uh, I think that there are a few better ways to spend one e evening uh, in the company of other gentlemen uh, then with the cigar and with the nice drink. So if you would all embellish me, I think that I might step over to my humidor and see what uh, I might be able to delight in for this evening uh, and uh, maybe pour drinks. So why don't we do this together, of course. Um, excuse me one moment. We're going to try to s uh, swing the boom over uh, so everyone can hear me. Let me know if you're having any trouble. Uh, of course, uh, one of the drinks I've been enjoying lately is just Maker's Mark Private Select. I probably need to give my little bar here at the office a little bit of love. I'm a little light on selections here. Uh, you know, a good uh, Kentucky bourbon, uh, nice and sweet, and uh, is a great pairing with any cigar. So there we go, nice drink. Um, and let's see um, what we have. Actually, this was a, a Christmas gift from my father. So. Um, course, whenever I'm in Houston with him, we are always enjoying a nice drink. And let's open the humidor, shall we? So you all know my trusty humidor. My trusty humidor, I'm kind of going through a little bit of an acquisition phase right now. And um, we'll talk through that in a moment. Uh, I feel like it's like almost every other year, it seems, I go through a big buying spree. Uh, and I've added a lot of really special stuff lately. A lot of which you can see on the channel. Uh, we've been uh, certainly unboxing these uh, through our lives, uh, actually through some of our videos. Now, this is a, a beautiful box of the Yam uh, Yamasa uh, from Davidoff. So I've actually been adding a lot of Davidoffs lately, uh, which you know we can talk about later. I've really, of course, always appreciated Davidoff, but Davidoff has always been the cigar for me that I would buy at the cigar shop whenever I couldn't find one of my Cubans. Uh, and that's really kind of changed lately, and I've really made the commitment to uh, start uh, aging some of my Davidoff cigars uh, by purchasing a few boxes. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get to the, um, you know, the present uh, kind of topic at hand, which is uh, what should we smoke tonight? So choices, choices. Let me know um, in the comments, you know, through the earpiece. I can't see them from here, so if anyone's saying anything, uh, you know, let me know. So there's a few options that I just want to present. I kind of have an idea of what I want to smoke, but we'll see. So first, you know, Mark at Cigar One, which is where I buy a lot of my Cubans whenever I'm not in London. Whenever I'm in London, of course, it's at Davidoff of London. Uh, sent me some beautiful sticks as a gift. Uh, and this is the El Rey de Del Mundo uh, Tiki Tac, or uh, something like Tac Tiki. Um, Exclusivo de los Andes, which of course uh, is a regional. And this is a, a 109 Vitola, which uh, again is very long cigar, it's like seven and something inches, uh, and has a beautiful cap that is a combination um, between a straight cap and a, um, a Corona cap. So um, 
This has a really great mouthfeel. It's a nice long cigar. My only, and this is a beautiful smoke too. I actually just purchased a cabinet of 50 of these things. I was able to call in a favor to Mark and, uh, and, uh, and uh, allow him to part with one of his, uh, his few remaining cabinets of these babies. So, exceptional cigar. So this is an option. This is on the long side, of course. Double Chronos would take us all the way through the evening. Um, of course, a nice Rolly, Romeo and Juliet, uh, Churchill. Beautiful cigar, a nice dark rafter. Um, it's very tempting, I don't know. Uh, but another cigar that I really haven't had an opportunity to smoke yet uh, is the Davidoff of London uh, anniversary cigar celebrating 40 years. So uh, we filmed an unboxing with this. I've got two boxes of these uh, from the Sahakians that I plan, they're down here somewhere, uh, that I plan on aging. But um, we smoked a, I smoked a number two last weekend. Uh, I've got a few boxes of those that I also purchased to age, especially for friends. But you know what? I'm going to smoke this one. So let me know what you guys think. Again, it's kind of hard to smoke and talk at the same time, so I find that during these live streams, I actually end up not smoking the full cigar, which is a little kind of uh, depressing uh, whenever you've got such nice one. I almost forgot my alcohol. Excuse me one second. And you all may be noticing my scarf. Uh, anyone that saw some of our live streams with Bud Shirtmakers knows that uh, we spoke about this. This is Bud's uh, knitted silk scarf. Uh, this is an absolutely incredible scarf that uh, has just an incredible weight and texture to it. I mean, it's a beautiful, they have it in black and they have it in this uh, ivory. And uh, doesn't this kind of just go great uh, with the outfit tonight? Uh, they sent this to me as a very kind of generous gift for uh, us doing the live stream with them, which, uh, you know, we don't get from many people, so I'll take, I'll take it when we can. Okay, so let's take a look. Careful not to get ash on that scarf, Daniel. That is a certainly good suggestion, so thank you for that. Uh, Koki Kandi or Kondo from Japan, thank you for joining. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? R.I.P. Uh, Nat Sherman, yes, uh, very sad. Uh, Michael Herklotz, of course, is, um, is a kind of an iconic uh, personality in the cigar industry, exceptionally well-dressed. And I've got uh, just a tremendous amount of respect for him. We wanted to do some content with Nat Sherman, but he was always a difficult uh, gentleman to pin down. Um, so let's see, we've got Jake Warren. Asking some questions. We've got uh, Bespoke, of course. Of course. Um, you know, Mitch joining us from Florida. You know, cheers to Mitch for his help uh, producing that Beef Wellington this weekend. Uh, if you aren't following me on Instagram, you know, please do. Uh, go visit us uh, at KirbyAllison.com. Or no, what is Instagram? So what am I saying? This is um, Instagram. I-N-S-T-A. Why don't we pull this up real quick? I'm just I'm pretty proud of this. Dot com. Allison. So I think we've tried to set it up so that you can actually see uh, what I'm looking at right now. Um, so if we can cut in a moment once this loads, I'd love to show everyone this uh, absolutely exceptional Beef Wellington. Uh, so why don't we uh, just pull that up right now. Look at that glorious Beef Wellington right there. Uh, isn't that amazing? So Mitch, uh, who is a, um, uh, has been a longtime viewer of the channel uh, and a fan, um, started his own Instagram uh, page called The Smoke, you know, introducing a gentleman to the uh, ritual of proper barbecue. And so he helped me make that thing. Isn't that thing pretty incredible? I mean, that's just, it's really uh, unbelievable. It was a huge hit. And uh, boy, that was amazing. So uh, anyway, where was I? So just saying hi to everyone. You know, please do check in. I love to know who's with us, uh, where you're joining us from. And, uh, you know, it's always kind of very important to, to be able to kind of see, uh, you know, who's with us. I mean, a lot of us really have gotten to know each other quite well, you know, through these live streams, you know, during uh, the quarantines uh, because we were doing them so often. And uh, to be completely honest, I really kind of miss those. So let's see. We've got uh, Eric from Norway. Cheers, Eric. We've got uh, Brad Taylor from Dallas. Brad, you should say hello. Uh, we've got uh, Nada from Naples. We've got uh, Francisco from Excellent. Uh, to, to, we've got, uh, boy, you guys are Adam, Eli from Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, we've got uh, Luke Reese Williams from St. James's. So are you in St. James's in London or is that a city someplace that I'm not uh, thinking about? We've got Jack from Edinburgh. I mean, one of my uh, favorite places. 
And we've got some more Texans. Jonathan from Houston. Mark from Iowa. We've got some uh, uh, a friend from Moscow and Russia. And we've got uh, Sam from uh, Suffolk in uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, Elizabeth from Washington, D.C. Cheers. Thank you for joining. Uh, Robin Payne from New Jersey. And Miguel E30 from Santiago, Chile. You know, I actually visited Santiago uh, for a Knowles expedition whenever I graduated college. It was a 90-day expedition through Patagonia. And uh, I have to tell you, what a beautiful country. Um, well, great. Well, let's kind of get going here, shouldn't, shall, shall we? Jeffrey from California. Ooh, boy, that's good. You know, I find that, you know, I have more and more trouble with scotch the older I get on the next morning. Um, okay, so let's cut this beautiful cigar. Uh, if you're smoking, let me know in the comments. I always love to know uh, what uh, other people are smoking. This, of course, is Davidoff of London's, um, you know, uh, long-awaited 40th anniversary cigar. You know, 1980 to 2020, 40 glorious years that the Sahakians have been helping the well-dressed uh, you know, really smoke great cigars. And so this is um, a really milestone cigar for them. And uh, Eddie Sahakian, or should I say Edward Sr., actually uh, debuted this cigar on our channel through one of our live streams. Uh, and our content with the Sahakians, I think, uh, is amongst our best. And so if you haven't seen the content with the Sahakians, you know, if you're up late, can't fall asleep, um, it'll keep you up. But if late at night, if you've got the time, uh, our live streams with the Sahakians uh, are really, uh, we've got one that's pushing 800 uh, or a million views, 800,000 or a million views, just to really speak about how incredible it is. But the story of this cigar is Zeno. You know, the Davidoff number two was Zeno's kind of favorite cigar. It was what he was always smoking. So whenever they wanted to do this 40th anniversary cigar, uh, they modeled it after the, the number two, uh, which is a beautiful format. It's a 25 to 30 minute smoke. Very elegant in the hand, 38 ring gauge. It's got this pigtail. Uh, now, the normal number two is a very light-bodied cigar. And uh, on the 40th anniversary, I think they really enhanced this, um, you know, uh, to create a much more complex flavor profile, but also to really, um, you know, to set this up to age gracefully and beautifully uh, by uh, blending it with the dark wrapper, wrapping with the dark wrapper. So um, there we go. So Daniel, you like our content with Eric Jensen? Uh, and, you know, best from the East, you couldn't be more right about the Sahakians. I mean, uh, I mean, I only aspire to be as half as classy as they are. Um, so we've got Jack smoking in El Rey de Mundo. So this is my favorite cigar cutter, the El Casco a cigar cutter. Uh, this is really what I would consider to be the finest cigar cutter in the world. And I, I don't say that lightly. I'm not trying to just, um, you know, to, to, be, uh, to exaggerate. Uh, but this, I've used a lot of cigar cutters. Look at how this thing just slices through that perfect cut. Because it's a lever action, uh, it just it slices through that cigar effortlessly. And we have these available on KirbyAllison.com. Uh, just search El Casco Cigar Cutter, and that'll come up. Maybe uh, Jenny in the back can pull up a screen capture there uh, of that just so you can see it. Um, of course, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, this is how we support the YouTube channel. Uh, but anyway, we've got some more interesting cigar accoutrement coming because, again, our videos with uh, uh, the uh, Sahakians uh, have, uh, have certainly done so well. That, uh, and this is just something I enjoy. So there it is, the El Casco Cigar Cutter, available in chrome and brass. Um, and it's an absolutely beautiful cigar cutter. And then this is a vintage Dunhill cigar lighter that, um, you know, that I actually purchased during the live streams, uh, the lockdown just because I ran out of matches and I was using uh, a pretty offensive lighter. And I said, you know what? I need to upgrade my kit a little bit. So here we are. So let's light this up. Now, of course, matches are uh, also a very appropriate way to light a cigar, probably even more appropriate than a, a lighter, but it's hard to argue with the ease. So uh, Eric, we've got more accessories coming. I'm working on some very special um, ashtrays that we're having made, of course, uh, that I'm very excited about. Uh, and then we've got some humidification products coming, nothing particularly special, but Boveda, everyone's familiar with that. Uh, we're gonna be filming a video on how to store cigars. 
And so I kind of want to walk through that a little bit and then have some uh, items to kind of help everyone. And, um, and then we've got the ashtrays. Um, you can probably add some lighters. I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for products. Uh, you know, maybe we'll have some cigar cases made um, and some nice leathers out of London. Once we can start traveling again, I can be begin sampling that. Uh, yeah, so this scarf really is beautiful. This is, again, the Bud Shirtmaker scarf uh, that um, they had. It's a knitted silk scarf from Bud Shirtmakers. And, uh, you know, again, Jennifer, if you can Google that by any chance, I probably should have uh, given you the heads up on that, but it's an absolutely beautiful scarf. Uh, cigar cases, there we go, that's a nice photo. So let me, if you don't mind, just draw on this a little bit and get it going. Um, watching your questions, this is uh, really just an evening for us. Uh, I don't want to, um, I don't want to ramble too much. Uh, I'd love to answer any of the questions that, uh, that you, of course, have. Curtis, I mean, one of my dreams, or Kurt in Colorado, and one of my dreams is to work with um, uh, the Kelliners, who actually helped um, Eddie and Edward design this cigar. Their blender kind of helped them. I'd love to come up with their own Wellington cigar, Kirby Allison cigar one day. You know, maybe it's a very limited uh, release uh, just for those of us who, you know, really enjoy fine cigars. Um, but that would be a fun project to go down actually to the Dominican Republican, uh, to the Dominican Republic uh, with Class Kellner, see the, um, you know, the farms, uh, get a tour, uh, and then of course sit down with their blender and actually, um, you know, taste and kind of design some cigars. That'd be a lot of fun. You know, Kevin, I do mix the Davidoffs with the Cubans in the same humidor. Uh, that's of course completely appropriate to do. Three-piece dinner suits, um, you know, I don't have one. Um, I'm a big fan of the cover bun, and so, um, I'm, and then some beautiful studs. These are the golden acorn studs that we actually sell. These were a gift from my wife. I liked them so much, we began offering them on the website. Um, so I kind of like the white. I mean, if you put a vest on, it really kind of covers this up. And so I'm not a huge fan of the three pieces. Yeah, so we've got the scarf, so let's take a look at that. Um, so again, this is that scarf from Bud Shirtmaker. Um, and whenever it comes to formal accoutrement, I mean, nobody does it better than Bud. I mean, we sell some bow ties and some cummerbunds, uh, but you know, we be don't even begin to scratch the surface uh, of what Bud has accumulated over almost 100 years of business. So anyone that's in London, you know, we have a uh, Savile Row walking tour where we not Savile Row, it's actually the Piccadilly Arcade walking tour where we actually visit Bud. So uh, they, uh, once, of course, were allowed to travel again, uh, should be on anyone's uh, itinerary if going to London. So uh, George345, good question. Uh, if you haven't seen our shaving series, uh, we've got some uh, exceptional videos that we've just released uh, talking about some of our shaving products. Again, just beginning to scratch um, you know, the surface of the topic, we plan to really do much more content on shaving uh, because a good proper uh, wet shave in the morning is one of the best ways to start the day. And um, I'm wearing an absolutely exceptional ancient matter dressing gown that we have made uh, by uh, our supplier that makes all of the ancient matter silk that we buy for our ties. There it is right there. Um, it's a pretty good deal to be totally honest. I mean, you compare it to, you know, what a silk dressing gown from Charvet costs. Um, it's made to order, so uh, you can customize the measurements a little bit in terms of chest size and sleeve length uh, and uh, things like that. But this is just an absolutely marvelous dressing gown. So if anyone's interested, by all means, uh, available on KirbyAllison.com. Uh, so let's see, just looking at your comments. So 150,000 subscribers, I mean, it, f it feels like it's taken us a long time to get here from 100. Uh, I mean, it's so much work. Uh, really on YouTube to build the audience. And so that's why whenever we hit these important milestones, I really do enjoy stepping back and just taking a moment to really thank all of you because you are the audience that kind of makes this all happen. Alan, well, you could have always dressed in black tie for tonight's black uh, tie live stream. I almost forgot, 
We are having a giveaway tonight. If you go to kirbyallison.com slash giveaway, um, there's the URL right there. Uh, we will be giving away four um, sovereign grade ties uh, tonight at the end of this live stream. So as uh, just a little bit of a thank you to all of our subscribers and all of our viewers. Uh, take a look at that and um, you know enter. All you have to do is uh, visit the YouTube page and I don't know, follow us on a few things if you don't already. Um, and uh, there you go. So. Let's see. Um, do we deliver to Dubai? We ship all over the world. Uh, what is the difference between black tie and white tie events? That's a big question, Carol. Um, I mean, of course, white tie is the pinnacle of formality. A white tie is uh, you're dressing with tails, um, you know, with a, a, a vest exclusively, uh, with a white bow tie, uh, and it's just a much more formal way of dressing if you you know, are watching any of the crown. I mean, you know, uh, they dressed in white tie, uh, even on, uh, you know, what was it, Downton Abbey, you saw a lot of white tie. Uh, the tuxedo really was an informal uh, evolution of white tie because uh, certain gentlemen uh, didn't want to be dressing up in white tie in the evening for dinner. And so the tuxedo was kind of like the country uh, version of what would otherwise be uh, the London kind of white tie kit. Uh, interesting little trivial fact is, um, is uh, uh, Henry Poole, actually invented uh, the tuxedo and they were the first ones to cut it and uh, you can watch one of our live streams with uh, Simon Cundy. We actually have some um, tours and some visits of the shop with him and um, interesting trivia. So uh, the tuxedo actually is a relatively modern uh, garment uh, having been uh, invented in the early 20th century. You know, if we get some love, some thumbs up, that would be great. Uh, so let's get some questions. So uh, when did you get into the gentlemanly lifestyle? So this is a question from Retra. Uh, you know, good question. I'd say that, um, you know, really probably evolved around college, um, you know, where I was enjoying dressing, um, dressing up. I've always been fascinated by quality craftsmanship and tradition. I mean, the idea that you can have a suit made today uh, the same way uh, that you could have it made 100 years ago always was really fascinating to me. And I'm a real people person. I mean, I enjoy people. And at the center of the bespoke relationship uh, is the bespoke artist, the artisan. And so, uh, you know, really the nucleus of that relationship is, um, is that relation, or the nucleus of that, uh, that process, uh, or the bespoke experience, in my opinion, is that relationship. So uh, that's kind of where it all started. I uh, went to college at the University of Texas in Austin. Fragrance suggestions. Uh, so last night I did a um, an Instagram live with Christian Barker, who is a used to or still writes for the Rake. He's a, a freelance journalist covering menswear out of Singapore, and um, we were talking a little bit about fragrance. Um, so uh, I wear a lot of florist fragrances. I mean, again. You know, it's a, uh, it's a heritage, a London firm uh, based right there on German Street. They've been there, you know, since the turn of the 20th century. Uh, incredible uh, heritage. Of course, a multiple warrant holder uh, with the British royal family. You know, Winston Churchill, uh, Ian uh, Fleming. I mean, you know, they all wore florist fragrances, you know, just right around the corner, just a little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump around the corner uh, from the St. James's Clubs. Uh, and it was really kind of, you know, the best place to buy fragrances. Uh, we have those available here, some of my favorite fragrances, at least, on KirbyAllison.com. And uh, so I was just commenting about how, you know, really the YouTube channel has been uh, certainly very impactful uh, just in terms of how I dress. You know, it wasn't until we started filming videos in the YouTube channel that I got into the practice of dressing up into a suit and tie every day. You know, before that, you know, I really don't see clients or customers here in the office because we're an online retailer. Uh, and I would simply, you know, wear a, a nice pair of jeans, uh, denim, uh, with a, a button-up dress shirt, you know, you know, bespoke from like Hibber Johnny Brothers, and a nice pair of shoes, no jacket, hard to believe. Uh, uh, because, you know, it just wasn't necessary, uh, to be totally honest. Once we started filming, 
Uh, it really put me into the practice of dressing into a suit and tie every day. And after I did it for long enough, I really felt that, um, or found, or discovered uh, that I enjoyed it uh, so much, you know, just uh, what it feels like to dress up. It puts you in a nice frame of mind, and you're treated better. Uh, and I think it is, a, you know, it's a real public statement in terms of just how seriously you take yourself. And so dressing up has really become part of my ritual. I mean, the wet shave every morning, um, you know, the getting dressed in my closet. And I was just commenting with Christian about how, um, how you know, the final touch is adding that, uh, that touch of fragrance, you know, before I leave uh, my wardrobe in the morning. And uh, whenever I don't, or should I say this, I should say it this way, that whenever I do elect, and it's not every day, to put on a nice fragrance. Um, so, yeah. Um, so whenever I do put on a fragrance, um, it just is that finishing touch. And there we are, there, those are, uh, you can see our florist fragrances. If you scroll down, I mean, those are all my favorite. The German Street, of course, is uh, an iconic uh, eau de perfume. Parfum. Um, and, um, and then, of course, a lot of the other ones are the eau de toilettes. A lot of people don't realize that uh, Floris actually has uh, exceptional bath soaps. And I was watching The Crown recently. My wife and I are going through The Crown. Uh, and on one of the uh, early episodes, you can actually see that, um, that they use the Floris soaps in The Crown. So fragrance, I mean... It's interesting, just the subtle psychological impact of a fragrance. Once you start wearing it, you know, whenever I do spray a fragrance on in the morning, you know, it has a psychological impact. I mean, it's uh, psychosomatic for sure. It's really kind of interesting. Uh, it's that final touch uh, that really uh, prepares me for the day. Glenn is, uh, of course, asking a, uh, well, CS, I was asking, am I wearing my silk socks this evening? Uh, of course, I'm wearing um, one of my oldest pairs of shoes, actually, right here, Grinson Opera Pumps. Uh, I bought these in college on discount uh, because, you know, back in 2007, I guess not many men were wearing opera pumps. And, of course, I'm pairing it with one of our sovereign grade 100% silk uh, dress socks, which are an absolute pleasure to wear. Uh, and I used to think that silk dress socks uh, really were reserved just for black tie. Uh, but we have these silk socks in black and in burgundy. And I have to say, I really enjoy wearing them uh, just daytime business formal. Uh, silk is an exceptional uh, fiber. It's incredibly strong. It breathes well. It's very dry. Um, and it's an absolutely exceptional fiber. So I have to say, I love silk socks. Uh, Jacob, the, the uh, cigar is warming up. And um, I have to say, I, I'm not smoking this quick enough. This is why I didn't go for the 109 uh, or the Churchill. That's because as I'm uh, speaking with all of you, it's kind of like a monologue. I'm doing all the talking. So let's see, London meet up soon. I mean, gosh, we had so many exceptional plans for this year that were completely derailed by COVID. I mean, how, how many, for how many of you is that true? I mean, I would imagine that for a lot of you, um, you guys had great plans this year, and COVID just had other plans for us. So what can you say? The Lord uh, uh, certainly is sovereign. He's the one that kind of decides what happens, and I guess he thought it was good for all of us to hit the hard reset button. Um, we were going to film some exceptional videos uh, in London whenever we were there for the World Championship of Shoemaking in April, and uh, unfortunately, COVID had other plans. And it's, as it seems, I mean, I don't expect to get on an airplane for the rest of the year, conservatively, and probably well into the first quarter of next year, if I'm lucky. Summer internships ruined. I mean, are you going back to college? I mean, that's an interesting question. I mean, how do you do college remotely? Uh, all these are really interesting questions. Mm. Great cigar. So let me just contrast this uh, very briefly. I'm gonna ash this. I'm not gonna try to get ahead of that ash because as you guys have seen, we've actually had a video uh, where we caught the ash on video right onto me. 
That's one of my favorite things to do is to keep either a spare badger hairbrush um, uh, or um, a garment brush handy because, uh, you know, inevitably I'll lash it myself. We've got Caleb joining, Caleb Malinowski, of course. Great vintage of customer service. Uh, you know, Caleb's been a great guy. Uh, Caleb, cheers to you. Hope that uh, since you're at home, maybe you're enjoying a drink. Um, but, uh, you know, Caleb, of course, is uh, really kind of runs in many ways, I guess, our shoe shine program. Uh, he certainly helped us launch that. And um, we, uh, Caleb has left. He's going to college, which is uh, certainly a very wise uh, decision on his part, which we fully supported. We were sad to see him leave, but uh, we certainly understood why. And, uh, but I'm happy to say that uh, Caleb's college fund is now our shoe shine program. So if anyone wants to support Caleb's college fund, uh, we've got an incredible shoe shine program, Shine by Mail here. Send your shoes to us, and Caleb is still coming into the office and uh, shining some shoes, kind of moonlighting with us, if you will. And um, so there we go. Uh, let's see, are you grateful for the support that you've received on your channel, Kirby? Um, uh, absolutely. I mean, I have to say, one of the things that I have enjoyed most about the YouTube channel is, um, you know, one of the biggest, there's two kind of big challenges that I really felt uh, during, you know, my career, to be completely honest. So, you know, I started the Hangar Project whenever I was 24 years old. Um, gosh, in retrospect, I can now fully appreciate how little I knew. I mean, gosh, was I uh, just young and naive and probably all of the, young, naive, and arrogant in all of the worst ways. Uh, I see a little bit of myself in Caleb, just kidding. But um, young, naive, arrogant, and um, you know, there were two things that I really lacked uh, as, a, um, as a part of just starting my own business at such a young age. One was uh, a true mentor, you know, someone to help uh, really develop me uh, and to learn from and I have to say that, uh, you know, a customer of ours um, has really become a very close mentor of mine. And uh, hopefully he's watching tonight. And so that was kind of the first, you know, kind of big thing that I think really helped take me to the next level. And then I have to say the YouTube channel helped bridge another very important gap, which is as an online retailer, uh, I don't have many opportunities to meet our customers. I mean, maybe we speak over the phone, we communicate by email. Uh, but as you all know, the reason we're here tonight together is because we share uh, a really unique passion for quality craftsmanship and tradition. And I have to say that the YouTube channel has allowed me to feel like I have a much closer relationship with all of you. And I have to say, you know, these things, a great cigar, a good, uh, you know, bourbon, a great scotch um, are best enjoyed in the companies or in the company of other like-minded men. And uh, I feel like in a lot of ways that this YouTube channel is uh, kind of a little bit of an outlet for me. Enjoy the decline. I couldn't agree with you more. Reject modernity. Embrace tradition. Uh, and I have to say uh, that is a fundamental uh, ethos we all support here. Anytime that you put on a tie, uh, you know, really, I think all of us uh, should uh, just understand that we are um, you know, taking a public statement that we embrace tradition, uh, the classics, uh, conservative values, I mean, you know, in a, in a, uh, at least in a uh, sartorial sense. And um, that, of course, is, um, is rare these days. I mean, uh, I have to say that I can go through an entire week and not see another man wearing a tie. Uh, and, uh, you know, my son goes to a very conservative uh, uh, Christian school here. It's a classic school. It's like a 1920s church education. It's amazing. All of their classrooms have oak paneling. Uh, actually, our new customer service representative, uh, Addison, who has uh, succeeded Caleb, uh, actually uh, was a graduate of, um, of this same school. And, um, you know, even there, where people are self-selecting into a very a small little group, uh, it's very rare to see any of the parents wear uh, ties, much less suits. And uh, every single time I walk in those doors, it's kind of been a little bit of a, a random kind of fetish of mine, if you will, to only go to that school wearing a, a suit and tie. And uh, it is a statement that I'm making in a lot of ways. Very interesting question from Ben. 
and let's go to that next. Uh, so next question with, from Ben was, any European destinations? Isn't this a glorious lighter? I have to say, I bought this on eBay for, I think, $250. It took me a while to find it, uh, but uh, absolutely great lighter. I'm uh, glad to have this. So Ben's question was, are there any European destinations uh, that I can have uh, on the radar? And uh, I do have to say that, of course, as you all might expect, and as I'm sure you all have certainly, um, probably certainly also uh, thought about, is uh, whenever we are able to travel again, where do we go? And um, I have to say the first place I'll go is London. And London is a very special place to me. Um, gosh, it is a, um, it feeds my soul whenever I go to London. Uh, you know, I stay at my club, the Carlton Club, right there in St. James's Street. I'm able to go see my good friends, the Sahakians. I'm able to go to Foster and Sons, walk down the Piccadilly Arcade. I mean, this is the epicenter, uh, you know, the, you know, the anchor of really, uh, of, of, of the gentleman's lifestyle and ethos. So, um, so yeah, I, I absolutely plan to go back to London first. Then, of course, Paris is always next on my stop. I have to say I'm a member of another marvelous club in Paris that is uh, like a little bit of midnight in Paris. It's like stepping back in time. You can smoke a cigar inside. It's all decked in beautiful burgundy velvet. Um, absolutely a glorious place, so I'll go there. Uh, but after that, There's two cities in one country that I'd have to say that I haven't spent enough time in uh, the last five years. Uh, I'd love to go visit uh, Vienna. Uh, Vienna is an absolutely beautiful, old world European city uh, that is beautiful, it's classic, it's elegant. And I'd love to take the cameras to Vienna and share Vienna with all of you. The second place is Monaco. Uh, I, I, I joke with a good friend of mine that uh, the day, if it ever happens, we hit 1 million subscribers. We'll be doing one of these black tie live streams uh, from the casino right there in Monaco. Uh, we will be there to celebrate. Uh, it'll be with champagne, uh, black tie, and you know, maybe, maybe we'll invite all of you to join us. And um, so I'd say Monaco is another place I really would enjoy uh, to spend a little bit more time in. And then I feel like Italy, although I'm certainly uh, drawn towards London and the British aesthetic. Uh, there's so much going on with, uh, inside Italy uh, with quality craftsmanship and tradition that we just haven't even begun to scratch the surface on. And so I'd love to take the cameras to Italy. Uh, Florence, Frienza, of course, beautiful. Uh, but you know, Milan, I have to say, I enjoy Milan more than I do Florence because it is a more activity, there's more energy there. Uh, Rome, of course. Naples, you know, if you like a little bit of hair, um, you know, it's a little bit uh, of an interesting experience there in Naples. So uh, all these places we would enjoy uh, to take all of you with us uh, through this channel. Of course, Japan, I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, Japan, I could spend an entire month there. So if any of you know any Netflix producers or any network television producers, we'd love to take Kirby Allison to the next level uh, through a travel series. Um, that is uh, certainly kind of on our, our roadmap somehow. Let's see if I can get a, a ring there. I did it once with that, that uh, live stream with the Sahakians. Let's see what else. I'm just checking out these comments here travel series will you're right that's what we need we need to go stalking uh, in you know this uh, the highlands uh, we need to go on a proper driven pheasant hoot uh, shoot um, and uh, you know we need to spend a little bit of time in the British countryside we need to spend more time in London uh, and as a part of that of course uh, hopefully wherever we travel to next we'll be doing some meetups Isla incredible Proportion and complexion, Francisco, duly noted. Uh, if the studio could please write that down, we will put that on our plan. We actually have a really interesting, um, 
little project that we've initiated as a part of our 100,000 subscribers. Luis, I don't know, could we pivot the camera real quick and maybe give them a preview of the wardrobe? Should we, should we change the lights a little bit? Can we shift that over just to light it up? So you'll have to forgive the fact that we weren't exactly prepared to reveal this quite yet. Uh, it's not done, but this is a beautiful built-in wardrobe that we're in the process of having finished uh, in our office. Um, we're going to have some beautiful drapes made, uh, and this is going to become our home set. So we've got the office on this side. This is going to be like stepping into my closet. Uh, we had this made by a beautiful woodworking firm uh, here in Dallas, uh, Palace Architectural Woodworks. And um, there you go. You can see our little output monitor right there. Uh, it's a multi-purpose uh, setup also. And so the idea, and that's been a suggestion of a lot of you, uh, has been to, um, you know, to begin doing more videos on, um, you know, just, you know, dressing. I mean, we've done so much content on, on shoes, shoe shining, of course. That's always going to be a big part of what we do uh, just because, um, you know, Saphir shoe polish is just such a big part of how we support this channel. And we really uh, don't get any other revenue other than what is generated through the website. So if you need some hangers, we're running a 15% off uh, promotion right now as part of our summer series to kind of help push us through this uh, coronavirus. Uh, we just received a huge shipment of hangers. So I know that we've been out of stock of that for a long time. I have to say, you know, the coronavirus has severely disrupted a lot of our supply chains. And uh, I mean, this uh, order that we just received um, was placed in January. Uh, and we just got it here in August, and we still have a few styles that are kind of struggling, or straggling, if you will, that are hopefully going to be coming into stock here in the beginning of September. So it's uh, it's been challenging, uh, to say the least, uh, but hopefully we're we're finally kind of pushing through that hump. So this is, of course, a Davidoff, uh, number two. This is the 40th anniversary of Davidoff of London. Uh, they might have a few boxes of these left. Uh, I bought two. I probably honestly should buy two more since I'm giving myself a little bit of uh, liberty with the cigar acquisitions at the moment. And uh, this is uh, the iconic Davidoff number two. It's a 38 ring gauge um, cigar. It is exceptionally elegant. It's easy in the hand. And um, uh, for the 40th anniversary, the Sahakians uh, gave it a much darker uh, or a darker wrapper uh, and a fuller body uh, filling. And so I have to say, this is a perfect cigar. If you enjoy aging, this is magic. Uh, I think this is going to age beautifully. And I have to say, it's smoking very well right now. Carol. One day, I, I guess maybe we bring Bianca on for a um, live stream. Um, it's an interesting idea. I've got a beautiful spouse. And uh, gosh, I'm looking kind of red right now. I guess it's the alcohol. Forgive me. Um, OK, so let's see. Let's keep the questions coming. <clears throat> Would you ever consider making a video on the Duke of Windsor's tutorial style? Uh, interesting idea. One of the things that we were planning in London was to actually do a retrospective on the Duke of Wellington, uh, who is kind of one of our namesakes, if you will. And uh, yeah, that would be really interesting. So let's see. Do, 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 currently smoking a Royal and Juliet, number two, turbo. That's great. More fittings with my tailor would be nice if they were allowed to travel. Uh, my tailor is going through a little bit of a rebranding, if you will. Uh, Joe is kind of passing the company on to his son, Davidge, uh, and they're getting ready to launch uh, Davidge.com or Davidge Bespoke. And so he'll be taking over the reins from his father. Uh, hmm, let's see. Uh, what do you think of cigar holders? Um, you know, I, I, I've got a cigar holder. It's in my briefcase. Um, I normally travel with a... Um, I have to say just a plastic bag and a humidor. Um, do we have any questions on Instagram? We're doing an Instagram Live also for those. 
Have I ever smoked in the garden room at the Lanesboro Hotel? Of course. I mean, uh, it's an exceptional place to smoke. Um, you know, uh, so we've got an echo in the back, so uh, we fixed that previously. It's making it a little bit difficult to hear. Let's have a Lord uh, Salisbury series instead, Britain's last sound PM, with the possible exception of Churchill. That would be interesting, Krill. Thank you for that. So, Francesco, I mean, I have kind of slowed down on my uh, Cleverly commissions. I mean, uh, Cleverly really kind of dominates my bespoke shoe wardrobe at the moment. Uh, and, you know, there's so many great bespoke makers out there that I thought that it was time to step out a little bit. I've got a pair from Foster's. And Daniel Wiegand, of course, is making me a pair. Uh, I was supposed to uh, start a commission with uh, Tony uh, Gaziano at Gaziano and Girling. Uh, he and Dean were going to make for me. Uh, Dominic Casey, of course, I mean... What's not to enjoy about Dominic Casey? Um, if you haven't seen those videos, um, you know, um, they are some of our best. Dominic has made an absolutely beautiful, divine pair of black cap to Oxfords. Dominic is supposed to be coming to Texas and New York in October, but again, uh, you know, uh, who knows what's going to happen here with the coronavirus. Um, Dominic Casey and I uh, are supposed to be working on some more shoes, but again, unfortunately, with this coronavirus, uh, the velocity of everything is just really kind of stalled. Um, we were going to do some uh, really interesting casuals through Dominic that I think he's uh, noodling some ideas with uh, on right now. Um, so there we go. Um, so we'll see. Turbo and Asser versus Charvet video could be interesting. I mean, Turbo and Asser course is to London what Charvet is to Paris. I mean, they are uh, kind of the most historic or most iconic of the bespoke makers. Um, uh, Turbo and Asser, of course, is owned by the Fayeds right now. Uh, I think that the uh, younger brothers run it, and uh, they still do a great job with bespoke shirts. Uh, if you haven't seen our Savile Row walking tour, you should check that out because not Savile Row, I keep on saying that, but our German street. Um, because it actually was a long time before I realized that the entrance to the Turbo and Asser Bespoke workshop was actually around the corner on the side street from the entrance to the actual store. So if you're ever there, uh, Hamilton shirts in Houston, you know, we should do that. I don't know why not. You know, that's a great idea. You know, we should travel to Houston and do Hamilton shirts. Let's take note of that uh, in the studio. Chilbor and Morgan. I mean, I'd love to do something with Joe. Again, we need more YouTube revenue uh, to support all these bespoke commissions. How do I store pocket squares? Uh, I have a drawer that I put my pocket squares in. Uh, you know, to be completely honest, I leave a lot of my pocket squares actually in the jackets. Uh, I don't rotate them as much as I probably should. Uh, but we also have a... Um, a tie rack or a pocket square rack that we sell um, available here on, on kirbyallison.com. Another reminder, if you guys have not entered our giveaway, kirbyallison.com uh, slash giveaway, uh, do this now. We're giving away four of our beautiful sovereign, or what are they? Yep, our sovereign grade neckties. And um, we have a beautiful collection of neckties that we've spent years developing. Uh, and uh, they're all made in the United Kingdom, you know, hand-slipped. Uh, completely handmade from 100% English silk. And let's just go back to that, that last graphic real quick, if you don't mind, because I just want to show how beautifully our sovereign grade ties knot. And we all know that some ties are just impossible uh, to produce a beautiful knot on, uh, much less a beautiful dimple. And uh, that is really one of the hallmarks, one of the calling cards of a well-dressed gentleman is a beautiful dimple. That's my old birdie knot. Um, it's a slightly asymmetric long knot. Um, my favorite, we have a video on how to tie that. Uh, but uh, I have to say, we're really stocked full of ties right now because not many people are going into the office. So now is a good time to buy ties. If you haven't already, take a look at our collection. Uh, and we are uh, in the beginning stage of receiving some of our fall collection. So stay tuned. Uh, here in September, we will be launching a new collection of Sovereign Grade Ties.
It is Monkey Gin in the background, uh, Mangus, and uh, that is my uh, preferred gin. Um, I have to say, I'm really interested to try out uh, Paul Feig's gin. Um, of course, he is a, a well-dressed uh, Hollywood movie star. Um, there's not many of them left. Uh, he really is kind of of the uh, old world kind of influence. He's a little bit of a silly guy. Uh, but I'd, I'd love to meet him sometime. We tried to bring him on on a live stream, but couldn't pull that off. Uh, so I'd love to try that off. Uh, sovereign grade uh, B&H or BH. Um, the whole philosophy behind sovereign grade uh, is that it is the quality standard that a sovereign or a head of state would have demanded. If you look at all the British heritage firms, especially those that are warrant holders, they're not fashion houses. Uh, they are instead the houses that focus on quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. And sovereign grade really is meant to invoke that idea of, of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition, you know, the quality standard to which a sovereign would have demanded. Uh, and uh, anyone that kind of follows the Prince of Wales or uh, any members of the royal family, the Duke of Kent, um, he's probably the most fashion forward of them all, and how they dress and really, you know, the makers that they, uh, that they patronize, uh, these are makers that are making products for them, of course, handmade, bespoke to the highest standards uh, that uh, contain uh, all of the elements of quality and craftsmanship that matter and none of them that don't. And that is an important distinction because it's easy in this era of kind of the internet and of hashtag menswear uh, to seek out all of these superfluous embellishments that can really drive up the price of something even as simple as a tie. Um, and that at the end of the day, you know, are nice uh, and certainly showcase uh, craftsmanship, uh, but don't really change the quality at the end of the day. And I think that with ties, a great example of this is, uh, you know, hand-rolled, uh, seven-fold kind of unlined ties. I mean, yes, you know, it's got an incredible amount of silk and it's hand-rolled, uh, but at the end of the day, I don't feel that it makes a better tie. And so all of our sovereign grade ties are meant to be very reasonably priced, and not just our ties, sovereign grade ties, but uh, anything that bears the mark of sovereign grade. Uh, you can trust is the best, um, uh, is going to look great. It's classically oriented, uh, made by the best makers that we could certainly seek out. Uh, but don't contain any of those superfluous, uh, you know, uh, you know, characteristics that would drive up the price unnecessarily. And I have to say, I mean, our sovereign grade prices are really in kind of the mid hundred dollar price point. So one twenty five to one forty five. I think our ancient matter ties are the most expensive at one seventy five, and uh, those are actually pretty good price points uh, given the fact that they're hand slipped, made from English silk. Uh, it's not stuff that we're having made uh, in any uh, foreign countries. Uh, they really still retain all of that providence that one would expect, um, you know, from Kirby Allison, hopefully. Retro, did I ever think I'd be where I was now? Uh, probably not. Uh, the interesting thing is going to be is where, where are we in 10 years? Uh, do you guys ever think that we'll hit the uh, million subscriber mark? Uh, that's a, a big milestone. I uh, would love all of your help in introducing our channel uh, to your friends to help drive up those subscribers. You know, yep, there we lost Nash. Just barely missed me. Um, so we are going to uh, just uh, take this again, always got the badger brush, just sweep this out of the way, happens to us all. Rubenacci in Italy, we would love to, um, to do some more videos with Luca. We did a live stream with Luca, our connection wasn't the best. He took us into his closet, which was really special, I enjoyed seeing that. Um, so there we go. With more Sahakian content, you'll easily hit 1 million subscribers. Again, had we been in London, we would have done a just uh, a plethora of content with the Sahakians. Uh, could never get enough of those guys. Uh, Alexander Kraft, uh, Monte Carlo, yes, I mean, he's got a great collection. And we'd love to do work with all these people, but, you know, it's time intensive and we need to travel.
Cameron is asking about a straight razor, uh, but with replaceable blades. Um, huh, you know, I own a straight razor. Um, we talked about that in one of our videos. And um, I've tried to learn how to use one. And if anyone is interested in coming to Dallas and teaching me how to use a straight edge razor, I would love to learn. Uh, I just felt that, again, that a double edge safety razor just hits that inflection point of um, that kind of three-dimensional optimization in terms of price, value, and, uh, and really quality. Uh, you get just as good of a shave from a safety razor as you can from a straight edge. Maybe not quite. Maybe it's marginally not as, as good as. I mean, I wouldn't really personally know because I've never really experienced the full glory of a straight edge. Uh, but it's just not unapproachable. I mean, I could send a safety razor to someone that has never shaved with a safety razor. Uh, you could watch one of our videos. It'd take a little bit of practice. You'd probably cut yourself up a little bit. Uh, but after two weeks, uh, you would be able to shave with a safety razor as quickly as you can, a mock or cartridge razor, uh, and get uh, a better shave that you enjoy more uh, and that's better. So there we go. Downton Abbey's the best. Gosh. I was so sad to see Downton Abbey leave. That, that first season, I have to say, was the best season of Downton Abbey. Uh, I mean, I binged watched Downton Abbey like you wouldn't believe. Uh, that Christmas special there at the end, I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, it was everything uh, we could have ever wanted in a show. And uh, gosh, I really was kind of sad to see that go. The movie was nice, too. I really enjoyed the movie. What TV series would I say has the best tutorial style? I have to be honest, I don't watch much television. Uh, as you all know, I've got three young children, and I run this business. Uh, and I've got a beautiful wife, and I have to say it doesn't really leave much time for many hobbies other than work and family. Well, Francesco, I hope that uh, you purchase your Saphir shoe polish from us. Again, uh, you know, risking a same shameless uh, self-promotion, I just want to point out that we do not sell anything on Amazon. And so although it is possible to find Saphir shoe polish from other people, we don't own it, unfortunately. Um, I have to say that by purchasing your Saphir shoe polish from us at KirbyAllison.com, you support what we do here on this YouTube channel. Tom Mahone, um, again, Tom Mahone is a dear close friend of mine. Uh, he was the first, well, I don't want to say the first. I mean, Chris Despis is probably my first tailor that I've really developed a, a close relationship with. Uh, but Tom is just a stand-up guy. Of course, you know, he used to own um, English Cut, and that's kind of a sad story that I won't, uh, that I won't uh, dwell on here. He's now with uh, Ready Man. We had a live stream with Tom on this channel. Uh, Tom actually welcomed my wife and I uh, to his home in Cumbria and really rolled out the red carpet for us uh, whenever I was just beginning. And I'll always have a profound appreciation for Tom. Uh, he is uh, a gentleman that any of us would enjoy a beer with. And that, I feel like, is in many ways the best test. So and there we go. Carmina or TLB? Uh, I think it's a toss-up, but I have to say I kind of lean towards Carmina. Uh, TLB does a good job. They've got great shoes. It's a similar price point, maybe marginally less expensive uh, than uh, Carmina. We've done uh, some collaborations with both Carmina and TLB. We've got our Russian reindeer chukka boots that are like here. It's like one foot in the door, one foot out the door with those. They were just embarrassingly delayed. I mean, we closed that group by right whenever things locked down, uh, and it's just tremendously delayed uh, that production, which is really frustrating for us. Uh, we finally got our first shipment, and I have to uh, admit to you guys, in a little bit of an embarrassment, uh, in our rush to get those out, somehow we uh, mislabeled 13 of those packages and shipped them out, and we're recalling those to get those back. Uh, and then we have our second shipment that should hopefully be arriving, fingers crossed, uh, on Monday or Tuesday of next week. So I'm hoping that uh, by next Friday all those things are shipped. So for everyone that's participated in that group by, Thank you for your patience. I mean, uh, and uh, not just your patience, but your grace. 
uh, and just kind of working with us through that. You know, Charles DeWitt, we'd love to do some content with them. You know, Charles DeWitt is a great example uh, of, a, of a ready to wear brand that I think does a really good job. And if they fit you well, you know, Charles DeWitt, it's hard to go wrong. Yeah, I have to say that the crown really, I mean, that's just what I love. It's that old world. I mean, whenever I think of, uh, you know, the best dressed series, I mean, everyone thinks of like Mad Men. Uh, but I have to say it was a little bit too 1950s Americana for me, uh, you know, with the skinny lapels and the skinny ties. Uh, I, again, just I find myself uh, perpetually drawn towards, um, you know, the bygone days of London. And so I'll always find that. Um, Matthew, I don't consider myself as coming from money, but I have to say I was uh, afforded a very rich and fulfilling childhood. And I have to say my grandmother, my uh, maternal grandparents, uh, had a profound influence of me. And I have to say, more than any other single person, you know, my grandmother has probably had more of a profound, a profound influence on where I am and just my affinity for quality. Uh, she really enjoyed uh, quality in the most subtle, elegant way, not pretentious. And I grew up around that. I was very fortunate to grow up around that. And I think that in a lot of ways, I kind of developed my hand, uh, if you will. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, Gans, Gansway. Uh, hello. What do I think of Merman Mallorca? Mallorca. Um, again, great shoes. Yeah, I think so. Eden Ravenshaft. Uh, you know, I know a little bit about them. Of course, Eden Ravenshaft is right at the head of Savile Row, you know, right at the top of Savile Row is Eden Ravencroft. Uh, they, of course, do uh, a lot of the, um, you know, what is it, uh, what's it, I mean, the garments that the lawyers wear, um, or not the lawyers, sorry, the uh, what lawyers uh, and the, um, you know, kind of the judges uh, in the UK. Another place that we would love to do more content with, um, you know, talk about, I mean, you know, what I love about London is that every, every, uh, each of these British heritage forms, firms that you walk into uh, have their own stories, the barristers, thank you, and um, have such rich tradition that is so unique to London. You don't see it anywhere else. Um, and I have to say that. Um, court dress, yes, I mean, great. Ring jacket and the armory. I mean, the armory, of course, is everyone's uh, little, um, you know, they're kind of like the... Uh, you know, the popular kid of uh, the hashtag menswear industry. They do a great job. Mark Cho has done a spectacular job. He really, um, you know, just uh, pushing quality and craftsmanship and classic menswear. You know, Bruno Malley, I don't know much of them now. I mean, you know, Bruno Malley is an example of a, um, you know, Italian firm that has uh, gone the way of fashion. Benson and Clegg, we did a live stream with Oliver Cross, the lead head cutter there. We were planning some content with Benson and Clegg. They've got their new uh, bespoke atelier on the uh, second floor, and uh, we really wanted to visit that. You know, shoe buckles, I don't know if I'd go for that bespoke. Um, I'd like to see uh, more men just dressing well. Patrick, or Patrico, yeah, my opinion on Nespresso looked no farther than my ECM Synchronica espresso machine I purchased from Whole Latte Love. Another YouTube channel we'd like to do some collaborations with. Uh, if you guys have some coffee suggestions, uh, by all means send those to me because I need to begin acquiring some really interesting coffees to use uh, with my machine. Uh, when is our next uh, video with the Synchronica coming out? Saturday. Saturday. So this Saturday we have my first video pulling shots from my Synchronica. Uh, it'll be a little bit of a humorous video. Uh, so uh, you guys, uh, by all means, uh, make sure that you Black Rifle Coffee will, I mean, great suggestion. Uh, but um, check that out, and uh, we'll go from there. Trey, so you asked about this, um, this highball. So this is um, a Waterford. Uh, crystal. 
And uh, I have to say that uh, one of the things that I particularly enjoy is the difference between a proper leaded crystal glass. Uh, there's no ice left anymore, but I have to say if you have a single ice cube, uh, just the, or, uh, the, aesthetical, the aesthetic clank that uh, leaded crystal produces um, and the weight uh, will never be replicated by anything that's merely made of glass. Uh, and so uh, I'm a big fan of replacements, uh, LTD, replacements.com. Uh, you can find a lot of really exceptional uh, out of production patterns. Uh, this is uh, the pattern of my grandmother's, I think it's Colette. Uh, if I was Waterford Colette, I could be getting that wrong. I've got it written down somewhere. Uh, and so, of course, we've got uh, the entire collection, and that's uh, what I enjoy. A book, I'd love to write one. Uh, Carlos, you know, whenever I'm in London, I stay at my club, or Carol. Um, Black Tie Suit is from Chris Despis. Another great story. So Chris uh, is probably the most talented bespoke tailor here in the United States. And, um, you know, unfortunately, he's had a few problems just with his production because uh, all of his tailors were just ancient. I mean, exceptionally old. And unfortunately, they've all just had to retire because of health problems. And so his production has all but collapsed. And um, he made this for me. It was the first bespoke piece that I ever had. He made it for my wedding uh, back in 2010. So uh, it was his wedding gift to me, uh, very special. Uh, we traded some hangers. And I have to say, I still wear it today. So Matthew, you ask a question that I know that a lot of you uh, certainly have asked about. And, um, you know, uh, let's see, Luis, I don't know if you can kind of sneak over there onto my bookshelf, but there is a book called The Gentlemen's Clubs of London you guys are asking about. And um, I have to say that, um, you know, one of the things I love about London is just its tradition. You can see uh, Mike scooting back there, so thank you, Mike. It's down there on the bottom, bottom right, and it's a great book. It says Gentlemen's Clubs of London. So pull that if you can. We'll show that to you. And, uh, you know, so the Gentlemen's Clubs of London were the original social clubs of, of uh, you know, the proper English aristocracy. You know, right there on St. James's Street, uh, you've got Whites at the top. Uh, you go down, you've got uh, Brooks's uh, there uh, on the right side if you're walking down towards um, uh, Pall Mall. You've got uh, Boodles, and then you've got the Carlton Club, which is my club. And, uh, you know, these were the places that the gentlemen uh, would gather uh, to, uh, to really socialize. So here's the book. Let's see. Gentlemen's Clubs of London. Go on Amazon. See if you can find an out-of-print copy of this. It'll give you a full history of all the clubs in London. And, um, you know, this is, these are bastions of uh, British tradition, if you will. And um, they are just absolutely marvelous places. You step into one of the, uh, really one of the, um, one of the St. James's clubs, it's like stepping back in time. You know, you have to wear a suit and tie. Um, you know, even a jacket and a turtleneck won't cut it. Uh, and, uh, you know, they are absolutely great places. Uh, Miles is a member of White's. I'd love to join you for lunch one day. It's the only club on St. James's that I've never had the privilege of stepping inside of, so I'd love to do that next time. And, um, you know, these are places that uh, I feel like really help uphold the tradition uh, of the English gentleman. And they're, so, they're social clubs. I mean, they're not gentlemen's clubs in the American sense. I mean, we all know what that is. Uh, those are certainly fun places also, uh, but it's not a place that we really uh, care to be seen with others. And, um, you know, the gentlemen's clubs in London are, are really quite special. Let's see, what else? Uh, and if they don't, where is one supposed to smoke? Well, uh, all of the gentlemen's clubs, not all of them, many, uh, have adapted to the smoking ban in London. They've all got outside terraces, uh, and so you can still smoke there. Of course, uh, the Travelers Club in Paris, uh, one of the reasons it is so special to me is because it's the only club I've ever been, well, not the only one. Well, in some ways, I'm gonna just caveat that here in a second. 
Uh, but it's the only club in Europe that you can still smoke inside of. And they're great salons. Um, you can still smoke a cigar. And I have to say that that is a very uh, important characteristic. Krill, yes, the Arts Club, great place. I'm, I'm a member of um, Hertford Street, another great place. Unfortunately, all these places I've not been able to go visit. Uh, let's see. Okay, another plug uh, for our contest. I'm going to pull this up on my uh, computer here very quickly. Uh, I just want to see where we are on this. So let's go to kirbyallison.com slash giveaway. Uh, let's see. Doop, doop, doop. There we go. So let's pull this up uh, on my computer. There we got. There you go. Give it a moment to load. KirbyAllison.com giveaway. Let me know what you think of the new website. Thank you for all your patience as we kind of worked through technical issues. Uh, we still have plenty to work on. Hmm. 419 entries. There we go. So we are giving away four of our beautiful Sovereign Great Ties. We'll let you choose. Um, and uh, to enter... You know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would be offended if you all weren't already subscribed. Uh, you have to enter, of course, your information. We don't give away anything for free here. Let's be honest. Uh, you can comment on a video, of course. You've got to... Um, you guys are welcome to email me at any time. I'm certainly not afraid to give that out. Click notified me of additional competitions. And uh, what just happened? There we go. I'm going to save that, and then you just simply click. It takes you up. This is taking us to a mystery video. I don't know what they chose. Watch an ad. These ads, of course, support the channel. What is this? Some silly Google Chromebook ad. Man, my computer's running slow. Probably because we're piped into the back. Mm. Well, there you go. Comment on this video. And so, you know, leave a comment. Of course, anyone that watches any of our videos, I just, I'm going to have to take a moment to remind you that your thumbs up, uh, you sharing the video to your friends, posting it on your Instagram page, Kind of all helps us get in front of additional people. 182 comments. Thank you all. Of course, we've got the elegant Oxford right there up front. Uh, I have to say, he beat me out to 150. A little bit of a sore point. But he had uh, the little help of the uh, arch nemesis of mine, if you will, to get there. Um, so comment. There you go. You go back. You get your points. And there you are. You're entered uh, into our competition. And we're approaching the 45-minute mark, so why don't, we, um, why don't we draw now? What do you guys think? Should we draw right now? So let's cut back there, because I'm going to have to go back in. Let's see. Gleam.io. There we go. So we're going to pull this up. Why don't we draw right now? Um, so how's everyone doing? Do you guys enjoy these black tie live streams? Uh, for our 100,000 subscribers one, and we actually gave away some of our anniversary ties to those that uh, dressed up in black tie, a little bit of company, if you will, and uh, posted about that. Um, wasn't something we did this time around. Maybe we should have. And I'm going to try to log in. There we go. This is a great cigar. I have to say it's certainly fuller bodied. I'm feeling it. This isn't a cigar that you're going to smoke while you're working, um, but very special cigar. Did any of you watch the live stream uh, that we did with Eddie Sahakian smoking that 1990 uh, Cuban Davidoff cigar? I think it was a number one. Wow. Talking about a special, special smoke. Okay. So, why don't we cut back to the computer? You guys can see me do this. This will be the drum roll gleam. It's what we use to traffic uh, all of these. Um, man, 
man, this is a great cigar. Whew, man, I'm enjoying that. Um, so there we go. Winners. Shall we draw? All right. There we go. It's invalid action. I don't know what that is, but we're going to just delete that. There we go. Done. Um, we're going to draw our winners. Drum roll, please. No bluffing here. You're seeing this in real time. Sorry for how slow this is right now, but what can we do? We are outputting our live stream directly to the internet, live from our studio here in Dallas, Texas. Wow, so you guys have a 4% uh, chance of winning. Not, those aren't bad odds, better than the lottery. Let's draw. All right, so if you win, there's two conditions. One, three conditions. I'm going to change this on you. One, you've got to let us know in the comments of this video that you won. I really would like to see that. Second, you have to send us your mailing address. I can't tell you how many times we, um, you know, we do these, and uh, they never collect on their prize. I mean, we can only chase you down so much. So we've got Pierre from France. We've got Stephen from Oakland, we've got David from Texas, from El Paso, and we've got John from St. Paul, uh, Minneapolis, or St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, sorry. And uh, those are our winners. So let's go back and see in the comments section who won. Uh, let's see, so if you won, please do let me know in the comments section below. We'll follow up, of course, with you directly. Um, and uh, we'll be uh, coordinating We'll probably just issue you a store credit, to be totally honest, uh, to allow you to uh, uh, purchase a tie. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy our Sovereign Grid ties as much as I do. I know you will, uh, because they're absolutely exceptional ties. Uh, you can choose from our permanent collection, what we have on the website now, or you can sit on that for a little bit uh, and um, purchase something uh, whenever we release our new fall collection. Hmm. Stephen, there you are. Um, so thank you all. I mean, again, uh, I can't impress enough upon all of you uh, really how much of a community this is. I mean, we're all like-minded men. I know that I would enjoy a drink at a bar uh, with anyone that is tuned into our live stream right now. Uh, let's see how many people we have. I'm going to scoot this over. We've got 228 people watching. I mean, I'm just I'm so flattered uh, by you all. Uh, even tuning in with us uh, and watching and uh, devoting a little bit of your time. And, um, you know, thank you all. I can't tell you how much I enjoy this. Um, we are going to be resuming our live stream schedule. We're going to uh, do them on Mondays, uh, I think at 1 or 2 o'clock. I'm not exactly sure on the time. And uh, it'll be a regular thing. I think we're going to do it on the second and fourth Monday of the month. And uh, the format will be similar to this it won't be black tie we'll be at the desk i'll take your questions maybe we'll shine some shoes together uh, on occasion we'll try to bring in some special guests uh, and uh, you know it'll just be a grand old time of us again indulging and enjoying uh, of uh, certainly uh, our passions for quality craftsmanship and tradition a few things i'll point out uh, the spy lithographs we are going to actually i mean this is a uh, a painting of a dear friend of mine right here uh, that, um, gosh, I've known for a long time. He's an artist here in Dallas. He's done all of my framing. Uh, but I think we're going to replace that with our lithographs. We need to make a note to do that. Uh, put those right there. That's kind of a small little Instagram set, if you will. And, um, yeah, Cortland, thank you. I couldn't agree with you more. One giveaway per live stream? Why not? Um, why not? So let's see. Thank you. Uh, 150,000 subscribers. Uh, gosh, we've been going at this three or four years now. Uh, it's really been amazing. And uh, I look forward to uh, the next 150,000. So yes, reach out to us. We'll give you your, well, certainly we want to get you your anniversary tie. Uh, just to email customer service and uh, make sure we can somehow uh, validate your identity. We've sent a lot of these out. The problem is, is we sent a, a lot of these ties internationally, 
And uh, I have to say the coronavirus has wreaked havoc on uh, the international kind of post because the, um, you know, that the post is carried by commercial air travel and the commercial volume is all but collapsed. So there we go. So let's see. Hmm. Say the cigar is really marvelous. Um, you know, if you're someone that enjoys a nice cigar, uh, I would really recommend you reach out to the Sahakians, Davidoff of London. They are able to ship these internationally uh, and see if you can uh, get a box. If you're ever in London or if uh, you live in London right now and you have the privilege of actually stopping by Davidoff of London, uh, please do send my regards to the Sahakians. Uh, they are as exceptional of gentlemen as they come. And if you haven't watched any of our videos on the Sahakians, please do. Don't just watch our recent content. I mean, we've got an exceptional library of fantastic videos. We've got, of course, our full-length John Live documentary. We have the full-length piece we did on Huntsman. We've got all of our walking tours in and around London. Uh, if you haven't watched these, you know, you haven't seen some of our best content. Uh, Robert, no watch because I'm wearing a tuxedo. And uh, when dressed in black tie, one should be uh, as unconcerned with time as possible. And uh, that is the tradition of not wearing a timepiece because why would time matter? You're dressed in black tie, you're in good company. Uh, we did a live stream uh, earlier today. We did that with Christian and we also are doing this on Instagram also. Is that even, that that's going? So it might have timed out by now. Did it time out? Did you restart it? There we go. So we've got some professionals here finally. Uh, let's see, one million subscribers, Ali. And mark my words, when we hit one million, uh, our live stream will be in Monaco. Uh, it'll be special. We'll probably throw one hell of a party. Uh, let's see. I feel like I'm not done. I still have more cigar to smoke. So why don't we just draw this out a little bit longer? I'm enjoying this. Why end a good thing? Uh, Pat Tech Philippe, you know, I have to say the 50-50 uh, I'd love a Patek uh, or Patek Perpetual Calendar uh, is a uh, bucket list watch for me. But as I said, I've got three kids in private school, and uh, that's my watch budget. Mohammed, favorite fragrance? I have to say, my fragrance of choice uh, for black tie is the um, uh, Mahan leather from Floris, and. Um, Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. I've got to see if they can do something for me. I'm going to reach out uh, to them and see if they'll do a run of that for me because uh, it's an absolutely exceptional fragrance. It's one of my favorites. And you know what? Hell, I'm going to ask if they can do some soap for me also. Um, you know, a paddock would look good, a nice Calatrava uh, with black tie. I had a Calatrava. I have to say I returned it, sold it back, didn't um, find that it um, really supplemented uh, my watch collection at all. We have a video on my timepieces. Uh, I've got, um, I'd say I've got two primary timepieces. Um, of course, my very special Chopard. It was a gift for my dear wife for my 30th birthday. I've got my uh, Rolex Datejust, which was a gift from my grandfather. And, uh, and then I have a, a, a the, so those, those are the two that I wear most often. And then I have my Bremont. Uh, which is a little bit outside of my aesthetic, if you will. Uh, it is a um, chronometer, and uh, that was a watch uh, that uh, my brother, who is a naval aviator, uh, had made as a part of their um, his flight group's last tour on the USS Enterprise. And, uh, you know, they do very special watches for pilots, and I was able to purchase essentially a duplicate of the watch that my brother had made. And uh, it's a nice weekend watch, not something you'd wear with a, a suit at all, uh, but uh, uh, sentimental value, which I have to say, you know, the more items that we can collect of sentimental value, the better. Uh, again, I think it's one of the great things about gifts, especially uh, durable gifts like watches, uh, is that you uh, enjoy them uh, for a long time. We've got uh, Lou left from uh, 
Mexico City, my wife's from Mexico City. Uh, I've got some great regionals uh, from Mexico City, uh, the Edmundo Dantes. I've got the, uh, the most recent uh, Bellicosos from them, great cigars. How many brushes uh, should you use between all the color shades? I mean, really, you just need two brushes, one for your blacks and your dark browns, and one for your, your lighter colors. Uh, but I do have to say, we've got another video on brushes uh, that we filmed that kind of talks through that a little bit. Um, again, I'm, uh, I'm going to shamelessly plug our products, so why don't we uh, pull up a screenshot of our brush category. Uh, but uh, I have to say, our pig bristle brush, if you don't own one of our pig bristle brushes, it really is a great brush to own. Great for cleaning. It's great for those, uh, those early stages of the shoe shine before you get to really buffing off the wax. It's great for cordovan, great for textured leathers. Uh, absolutely some exceptional content. Swain Adney, Ettinger. Uh, Swain Adney makes a brief cameo in our Piccadilly Arcade walking tour, uh, but unfortunately they were remodeling at that time, and so we really weren't able to be welcomed in. Weekender. What do you mean weekender? Like a weekender bag? I kind of have one. Certainly, Eddie, I'm enjoying my evening. This is probably the point, 90 minutes we start hitting, the point of a diminishing marginal return. Uh, this is being recorded, and it'll be on YouTube forever, so I try not to get too blitzed on our live streams. So there we go. Will, great suggestion. We'll mark that down in the production studio there behind us. The Tesla does have autopilot. Thank goodness. I have to say, I really enjoy my Tesla. Uh, my vehicle of choice would be a late model a Bentley Arnage. One day I'll own one. Uh, I think it is the most beautiful of all of the Bentley sedans. sedans. And, um, you know, I've just been so afraid of the maintenance. I mean, you can buy one for forty or fifty thousand dollars, so about the same price of my, as my Tesla Model Three. Uh, but uh, man, I mean, you can afford the car, but you can't afford the maintenance, as they say, for a lot of those older vehicles. And uh, I sure would enjoy to buy one of those one day. I will a proper, proper sedan. I also need a garage to put it in, uh, which we don't have at the moment. Let's see. Mm. Getting some O-rings there. Look at that. Can we get that? Ah, uh, we lost it. Let's try to do another one. You can do it whenever there's no uh, air circulating. Yeah. Uh, well, Brandon, again, I live in a nice area of town, so uh, don't have a garage yet, um, but we've got a beautiful home. That's all that matters. So let's see. All right, there we go. 150,000 subscribers. I'm just going to, again, thank all of you uh, for sticking with us, for joining us, for being a part of this. Uh, I like to think that, uh, you know, Kirby Allison, you know, this company, this YouTube channel, uh, really is so much more uh, than me. Uh, it really is a movement in a lot of ways. I think it's a philosophy. Uh, it's uh, the values and principles. And uh, we all uh, come together uh, to explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Of course, uh, we help support that uh, through our e-commerce site, KirbyAllison.com. Uh, please, I appreciate uh, each and every one of your purchases because uh, they do help support us. Uh, there's our brushes uh, right there. Of course, we have one of the best, best collection of brushes, I have to say, uh, in the world. Uh, I've spent an exceptional amount of time developing these brushes. And is our Wellington Crep brush on there? Can you, can you find that? This is our newest brush. Um, is it the bottom? Is it... Uh, is it not on there? You might have to refresh your cache. I don't know if you can do that. Um, but anyway, our Wellington Crep brush should be on the website. Uh, this new Magenta website has some very persistent caching uh, that I have to say is uh, quite frustrating at moments. Why don't we take it back to my computer if you don't mind. Uh, I'm proud of this brush. 
And uh, we're going to go to the website, kirbyallison.com. Let's pull that up. There we go. We have it. Everything is loading so slowly. It's probably because we're maxing out our bandwidth, pushing uh, this uh, to all of you. There we go. 15% off all hangers. We're fully, almost fully restocked after a very long, um, very long, uh, very long absence. I'm so sorry. This is so slow. Okay, so let's see. Shoe shine brushes right there. Little trick, just learned this. If you do a question mark and some random characters right there at the URL, um, it'll force a recache. So let's find, where is our Wellington Crep Crush? We haven't even done the photography yet. Hmm. Goodness gracious, let's search. Crep. Crush. Get that up. Here we go. Wellington. Crep brush for new buck. We were having some problems with our other brushes. And so um, we had this made, and I have to say we uh, use only the highest quality 100% natural crepe brush, and uh, this is the slowest I've ever seen anything run. Hopefully the website's not crashing. Hopefully it is crashing because all you guys are buying stuff right now. Goodness gracious, that's really slow, isn't it? I don't even see the pop-up. Huh. Okay, why don't you go outside? There was a crepe brush somewhere that was on my debt. Ah, there it is. Wellington crepe brush. Isn't that a beautiful logo? Wellington, the Duke of Wellington. Kind of, again, drawing on that inspiration. This isn't a professional ph photograph. I did that myself. Uh, but that's our newest brush uh, that is a part of our a collection of Wellington uh, shoe shine accessories. Of course, we will always sell Saphir shoe polish. God, this is amazing. I really am gonna have a hard time putting this down. It's a great cigar. All right, well, I guess we will end there. So uh, thank you all for joining us. Again, that was a very long kind of outro, but uh, here we are at the end of our live stream for 150,000 subscribers. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, God bless, and I hope everyone has a terrific evening. And please do drop us a note and join us uh, for all of our other live streams that we'll begin hosting on the second and fourth Monday of every month. Uh, and, uh, yeah, guys, cheers uh, to all of you. I'm Kirby Allison. Of course, you know that I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition.